I claim that because the contradiction in the teaching from the previous prophets with what Muhammad came to teach. So this is, has been my stand, what I reject Muhammad. And I've got reason to prove why I'm making this. Uh, so what was your name again, brother? Marco. Marco, good to meet Michael. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Muhammad, yeah. Okay, so uh, you're, you're being somewhat reasonable in saying that there has to be consistency between the prophets. If you're right. talking about one God, yeah. if you're talking about a creator, God who is a creator, who reveal himself according to the Quran, talking about the previous scripture, yeah, yeah. then you have to be consistent yeah, in yeah, terms cool. of the teaching. All right, so uh, here's, here's what we would say, right? We, the Quran says, لَنُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ that we don't differentiate between any of the prophets in the message. In what message? In the fact that we believe in one God, for example, that there's one God worthy of worship. So for example, the Muslim would say that all the prophets that came beforehand, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and all of those, they came, they believed in one God and they worship one God only. You know, and that's the, the message of the Quran. Even Jesus, we believe he said that, right? In fact, we would, the Quran makes a, a question, the Christian, or makes a statement. It says, Ibrahim, That Abraham wasn't a Jew or a Christian, but he was upright, a submissive, upright Hanif, believed in one God, and he wasn't a polytheist. Now, another verse in the same page, in Surah Al-Amran, it's uh, Abraham couldn't have, you know, uh, read the Torah or whatever. Or, the Torah didn't come after Abraham, until after Abraham. The point being here is that all of the prophets who believe they came with the message that one God is worthy of worship. The issue we have now with the Christian is that Christianity in its modern form, Catholicism and Protestantism and all of them, it, it preaches the gospel of the, uh, it, 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 okay. It preaches the Trinity, right? Now we would say that the Trinity. The tr uh, how, where do I hold this? Yeah, can you hold that on? There? Put it out, just. Uh, I've got too many. Yeah, just. No problem. Yeah, just put. I've got too many of them. No, no, it's fine. We are brethren. Come on. We're just a different belief we have. That's yeah. all. We have in conversation. So. Uh, that's it. So we, we believe that the Trinity is not so, something which is invented. No, 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 no. Sorry, just put it. Put it. The Trinity is not mentioned in the Old Testament. Yes, we the Jews did never believed in it. It's there was a clear development of the Trinity historically speaking. Yeah, the the, the Holy Ghost was never made as a co-equal, co-eternal part of the Trinity until the fourth century after the Cappadocian Fathers, you know, decided for that to be the case. You know, the Trinity itself makes no sense, logically speaking. Yeah, yeah. And the Trinity is not in the Old Testament. So we say that if what consistency is what we're looking for, then you don't find consistency between the Old Testament and what Christians are talking, or even the New Testament, quite frankly, which doesn't explicitly talk about three co-equal, co-eternal uh, persons of the Trinity and what we're finding from uh, for Christians today. So we're saying that the natural continuation of the previous prophets and what they came with was clearly Islam, because Islam is upholding what Abraham spoke about, what Moses spoke about, what Jesus spoke about. And Muhammad Sallallahu he came as a final prophet and messenger, only to announce that there's only one God worthy of worship. That's the, that is the crux of the religion of Islam. So I feel like the inconsistency, if anything, is, is, belongs with the Christian, because the Christian here has to believe in the Trinity, which has no basis in, in the Old Testament, or in uh, Abraham's words and his teachings on Noah or all of these prophets of the past. That's our position. Okay. No, I'm not talking to you. No, no, they have, I'm having they have a dialogue. Yeah. It's a very calm dialogue. So again, I think my, my first claim is, I mean, you saying that uh, Islam does uh, embrace the previous um, uh, prophets, that you do believe in them, it's, a, it's just a claim. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empty claim. Because when you say you believe in them, why you, would you believe in them? It's what they've said. They say they are prophets because what they have spoken on behalf of God, isn't it? 
So what is spoken for God, that's what you have to believe. But if that message just spoke, and then with the message that Muhammad is bringing, contradict, mm -hmm. that's where tension is. And okay. you have to believe what Muhammad said because of the claim within the Quran. And you're trying to correct the Bible, which is the previous scripture we came. And when we go into the scriptures of uh, the previous scriptures, in the law, in 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 in, in a teaching, completely different. Like you said, there is only one God. But you know, God within the Old Testament associated Himself with His Redeemer. Has been one. Does one man teach the same message? He doesn't. He say Allah is one. He cannot take part. In it. But when we have a clear statement within the Old Testament and the prophet who came before Muhammad asserting this and making clear statement, we have to now identify who is lying. What about this the prophet, look, if you have two witnesses already, or three, it's already enough to see the variety of the message against one who came after, many centuries after, when the message, even what the prophesies came to pass. Because that's what we see, the Old Testament, the, test, the, the prophet, what the prophesies, everything the prophesies came to pass. When we said, uh, the one shall be uh, born, shall be called the son of God, whatever. These are prophecies, and this prophecy came to pass. And you've got someone coming 600 years after, claiming God has not son. So it's a problem. My problem is, again I will say, in character and principle, Allah cannot be Yahweh who gave us the temple. Allah does not enter creation, which is mean, when we read this previous scripture, God enters creation, Mount Sinai, he wrote the Ten Commandments himself, and gave it to Moses. This is what we've got, before even Muhammad came. And when you have this language, this teaching, and when you say Allah does not enter creation, creation there is a incompatibility. Okay, I, I, but yeah, now I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna address about the oneness of God. But let's, let's, let me just let me give one. Yeah. Can I, can I just come back to what you said? Yes, so I you, give a reference now. You've spoken a lot, but you haven't said very little. You've spoken a lot, but you have said very little because. In that time, you haven't shown me where there's a contradiction between the Old Testament uh, proclamations of the, the prophets of old and Muhammad's proclamation of one God. So what, what I'm saying is that what's crystal clear uh, in the Old Testament is that, uh, as, as I mentioned in chapter 6, verse 4 of uh, you know, uh, Deuteronomy, you know, Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad, which is that, Hero Israel, uh, your, Lord, your Lord, our Lord is one Lord. That same language is used in, in the Quran. The same thing, one and only. Now, what I'm saying is that it seems to me to be the case, even if you look at the Old Testament, yeah, and look at what Abraham was talking about, if you look at what Moses was talking about, he was telling his people to believe in one God worthy of worship without any associates. Don't make any graven images of me. It's one of the, the commandments uh, in, in the Old Testament. So we have the the commandment to worship only one God. You have the commandment not to make any graven images of God, uh, and so on. These commandments are up, up, upheld only by the Muslims. Christians now, if you go to a church, there's graven images everywhere. You know, if, 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 you, took, if you go to the, uh, the proclamations of the creeds that have been put forward, like the Nicene Creed, the Constantinople Creed, and the Child Chalcedon Creed, and all these creeds, all of them are talking, about, except for Nicaea, after 381, they're all talking about three co equal, co, uh, co eternal uh, persons of the Trinity. Now, what I'm saying is that if we're talking about consistency, I have only one question for you. Yes? The Old Testament is making it very clear there's only one God worthy of worship. That's what the Old Testament prophet said. Okay. Now, I'm saying that Muhammad وسلم, and Islam also says there's only one God worthy of worship. The Christians today, Protestants and Catholics, they say that there's one God, but is identified as three persons of the Trinity, which are co-equal and co-eternal. Uh, We're saying, from whence did you get such formulation? This formulation of three co-equal, co-eternal uh, persons of the Trinity was developed historically. It was not first there. We can see a clear historical development. That's why in the 325, in the Council of Nicaea, the Holy Spirit was not co-equal and co-eternal. He was there. 
as the Lord, but not as a God that's co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Only in 381, he became co-equal and co-eternal after the Cappadocian fathers deemed him as such. Uh, and there was great debate about what the placement of the Holy Spirit is going to be. What I'm saying is that you can even see, and I'll add to this, uh, church fathers like Justin Martyr, yeah, Justin Martyr, the church father, he's talking to the pagans of his time. And he's saying to them, look, just like you have Jupiter, you believe in Jupiter, we also believe, uh, is the son of God, you, uh, is the son, we also believe in the son. So he's trying to, you can see there's compromise, theological compromise being done by the early church father. There's a development that ensues as a result of it. And then there's a crystallization of a new religion, which Theodosius II puts forward as the, the religion everyone must believe in. That development is not there in Islam. Islam tells us to go back to the original message of Abraham and Moses and Jesus. So you have to explain to us how if Christianity is true and the Protestant or Catholic formulations of it or even Eastern Orthodox formulations of it are true, why is it that we can see a clear historical development of what constitutes God for, for you guys? And how can you, how can you square this triangle here? Where you've got the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, co equal, co eternal, and that the Old Testament doesn't mention anything uh, like this. Even the New Testament doesn't mention anything like yeah, this. Yeah, okay. But I'm, uh, um, I, I'll go back to the original. I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to go too into uh, the reflection of a church fighters right away okay. through the process to come to the conclusion. Because, you see, my, my claim is I'm putting on trial Muhammad and the prophet, the previous prophet. So basically, what they said and what one before it said, according to the moment, to the same, God cannot have, can have uh, uh, anyone next to him. So he, he cannot share his glory. So, so what, what, what I'm trying to do is, is just to quote what the prophet before Muhammad, what they are saying. Then we compare, because we can only compare within what they say. Here we have Isaiah 44. Within Isaiah, what does Isaiah, the prophet of God, and they said about the oneness of God, God being one. So I'm going to read the biblical verse, what does Isaiah say? Isaiah 44, what does it say? That says the Lord, the King of Israel. Who is it? The Lord our God. Yeah? And that says the Lord, King of Israel, and his Redeemer. Yeah? As far as we know, Jesus is the redeemer of the souls of men. What does it say? The Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. In this context, when we bring Jesus, when God says he's one, there are one in unity with his son. And this is the understanding of the previous prophet before Muhammad. And this is not the only verse. I'm going to give you another verse. So I'm going to give you another verse. What does it say? Another verse in Psalm 2. I've got Psalm 2. Yeah, Psalm 2. Again, what does it say? God is speaking before even Jesus came into the world. What does it say? What do nation rage? And the people brought a vain thing. The king of the earth saved themselves. And the ruler take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break the bond in pieces. This is the intention of men trying to separate God and his anointed, his son. And what does he say? Then he says, we who sit in heaven, who sit, who sit in heaven, who sit in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his right. God will be so angry for people to try to separate him and his anointed. So when we talk about God is one, is it talking about God creating in his ruling? He is the Father and his Son, who is the Redeemer, who came to redeem us, which is I'm not talking to you, please. He's a, he's a, he's a giant in Gawa, so we don't have to speak on his behalf. No, we're having a very peaceful conversation. No, I've been very respectful. So I'm just making yeah. my point. So my point I'm saying, when we're reading this, uh, 
the belief of the previous prophet with the teaching of Muhammad. When he says in the Quran, I think, I don't know, uh, 9 uh, verse 30, when he says Allah cannot have a son because he does not have a girlfriend. And when we have this language, That's when you go, oh, look, <laughs> look, when we go in proverb, yeah. now I'm going to read proverb now. You cannot have a son. Is, it, is, that, is that, am I making a false no, no, claim? No, no, no. So, okay. we'll, we'll so come if I go, because he doesn't have a girlfriend. No, no, that's not in 9 30. Allah does have, have a girlfriend. So I'm just trying to represent yeah, yeah. the understanding of the previous prophet. Okay. They understand, they understood. Okay, can, can, God, we, can I. I'm going to finish. Yeah, okay, cool. So God in his yeah. unity, when they say God is one, oh, here, Israel, your Lord, your God is is one in that unity there is God the Father and there is also the Son within that unity. So that's the claim I'm making, which is the teaching of Islam contradict. Uh, so I'm gonna give you the last again another can, can uh, I re respond to I'm that? just gonna finish I'm, okay go ahead. You see, no no no, 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 no. I'm just trying to lay what's the yeah, go ahead. teaching yeah, yeah, yeah. the belief of course of the prophets uh, the previous prophet yeah. and what Muhammad taught. That's yeah. my, my, my that's why I reject one to not be a true prophet. Okay, so if I go to another verse, come on, yeah. don't go another verse. Let him, can this be the last one? Because yeah, it's the last one. Yeah, and then and then I can so retort. Look, yeah. What does it say? Yeah, yeah. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? This is Proverbs 30, verse 4. You can go and research. I like giving reference. I want you to give knowledge for yourself to understand. I'm not quoting my word, what the prophet taught. It's up to you. You can still accept it or reject it. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his face? Who has borne the water in a garment? Who has established all the end of the earth? What is his name and what his son's name? So from all the Old Testament, there is a God and his son. So it's a well, well, well established. stated, okay. established. Okay. So that's my problem. I'm no, okay, saying fine, fine. Let, let's, when, let, when we come yeah, to Muhammad, yeah. then he does not okay. say, so, he so, does not agree. God has his divine son. So that's right, my problem. Okay. So let's deal with, I actually asked you a question, but you didn't. Oh, which one? Sorry. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, will, I will bring it back to you. Because the initial claim that you made was that there was no consistency between the Old Testament prophets and what the Prophet Muhammad came with. And then I told you that from our perspective, the, the, the inconsistency actually lies with the Christian tradition. Because wherein you'll find in the Old Testament, all the prophets, you know, coming with all these kinds of um, proclamations of believing in only one God, uh, therein you'll not find anything of the Trinity. You'll not find anything of uh, co three co-equal, co-independent. I'm not. Uh, co sorry, co uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm not making. But I'm, no, no, but let me just finish because I did let you speak for for some time. So, 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 yeah. So, so I won't just. No, just no, one, no, let me. One no, no, I let, I, no, no, no. Please let me finish because I did let you go on for at least six minutes. So what I was going to say was that so the, that's the first claim I made. Then you talked about you brought these these quotations from the Book of Isaiah. And you spoke about you know the redeemer and separating God from the redeemer and so on. For us, we don't have a problem with Jesus being the redeemer in the sense that he'll come have the second coming. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We believe in all those things. In fact, the Quran says it actually casts blame and censure on those individuals who try and separate God and His messengers, including Jesus Christ. The Quran says that, and they they wish to separate between God and His messengers. That includes Jesus Christ. So anyone who tries to separate between God and His messengers, we say that this is a grave mistake. But obviously, we, we, you, you talked about sharing glory. We're saying that the ultimate glory, which is that the, of, of creation, the, the ultimate creator is God. But in terms of glory that is imparted or endowed by God to the creation, then of course, Jesus is one of the most glorified people in Islam. We believe in that. It should be that, the case. So that's the second thing I'll say. Thirdly, in terms of this thing about sonhood, about you know Jesus being the son and so on, now I'll refer you to the book of Matthew, which says that Blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, it's, how do we understand this idea of son, sonhood? If you understand it in the sense that the peacemakers, and this is understood metaphorically, then I have no problem with the metaphor. To say God has children, the children of God, meaning what? Meaning that, you know, the peacemakers of the peacemakers on the earth. So there's no biological element there. It's not adopted. There's no God didn't adopt a child, you know, ask for a child and so on. So if you're talking about peacemakers and you meet um, uh, you meet how you say it metaphorically, then there's no issue here. So what we're saying here is that how do you define 
what it means to be a son of God. If you define it as per the biblical discourse, blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. We haven't got a problem with that. Uh, in fact, we are unified on the issue. We just wouldn't call them the sons of God. The, the, the word Ab and Rab are actually similar in the Arabic language. Ab means the father, Rab means the Lord. There's a, there is a proximity in, in linguistic uh, discretion there. The Ab means the father of someone. And there is a caring element that the, the, the Lord has, but we don't believe God is a phys physical father or biological father or anything. We wouldn't call him father from that respect. It doesn't mean that we don't believe that there's a caring relationship, a loving relationship between uh, God, the Wadud, the loving one, and then the creation. So right now, I feel like you have failed to present any meaningful contradiction. Your initial claim was the Old Testament, the prophets of the Old Testament, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi what they're coming with are two different things. What I'm saying is the opposite claim. I don't want us to speak cross purposes. Because what I'm saying is that what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with in terms of Tawheed or monotheism, this unadulterated, respectable monotheism, which is to believe and worship in one God with no other deity worthy of worship except for that one God, is exactly what Abraham came with, is exactly what Moses came with. And in fact, this, uh, this notion of a trinity, three co-equal, co-eternals, it's, it's made up. That's what's invented. And you, you mentioned chapter 9, verse 30 about وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ صَاحِبَ It's actually chapter number 6, not number 9. وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ صَاحِبَ chapter number 6. Yeah, in the verses 100 something, right? Uh, that he doesn't have a consort with him. God doesn't have a consort with him and so on. In chapter 9, verse 30, which you quoted, it says, uh, you know, in fact, it says that وَقَالَتِ uh, الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْنُ إِبْنُ اللَّهُ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَى الْمَسِيحَ إِبْنُ اللَّهُ يُضَاهِئُونَ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ That's what it says, that the Jews say that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, is the, son, the Jews say Jesus, is the Son of God and the Christians say that G Messiah is the Son of God. And this is very interesting. Here it says, uh, They are copying the people that came before them. That God will destroy them and, the, the, you know, uh, how could they not, you know, uh, come to terms with this? You, this idea of the Christian nation copying p mythologies that came before it is now uh, established in the literature. Like I said to you before, Justin Martyr is mentioned in his, ver in his uh, works. He's having conversation in the Roman Empire with the, uh, with the polytheists of his time who believed in Jupiter, who believed in son, father-son relationships and so on. And we know father-son relationships existed even at the time of the Greeks. We know you have Zeus and Hercules. You have all this mithra mithraism and all that stuff. It clearly seeped into the Christian tradition. And we have evidence of that. We have evidence of the fact that the, these individuals were compromising when Constantine became the emperor of the Roman Empire, uh, empire in, uh, and then he made, first of all, in the year 313, the Edict of Milan, he made Christianity acceptable, and then afterwards he became a Christian himself and promulgated the Christian, Christian religion. You can see that he had a syncretic approach to religion. He put together the paganistic uh, elements of the Roman Empire, which already took the Greek god stuff with the father-son relationships, you know, and which existed even in Egypt, you know, the Isis and Horus and all those kind of things. And they put it into Christianity. That's why you have now this development of Christianity, you know, and all these controversies like the Aryan controversy, development of Christianity into a polytheistic religion, basically, which is the idea of the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and they're all equal and eternal, co-equal and co-eternal, you know, which is a development. So you have to struggle with this. You have to endure this contradiction. How is it the case that we have definitive primary source material evidence that there was a development in the doctrine of the Trinity, the point of which at first it was not known as three and one and one and three, whereby all three persons of the Trinity are co-equal, co-eternal. And then after that, in the fourth century, that crystallized as the creed of Christianity. And you're, and, and you're coming to me and telling me that Islam is contradictory to the Old Testament prophets because they believe in one God, where clearly we can see how Christianity is contradicting what Jesus came with, what all the other prophets came with, because they're coming with three and one and one and three. So you have to explain this historical development. You have to explain why logically the Trinity doesn't make any sense. And you have to explain why there's not even any clear New Testament references to the Trinity. And, you have to, and then you have to explain why these contradictions exist between the notions of the Old Testament prophets and, uh, and this idea of the Trinity. That's what the contradiction is.